evening. This is Matt Bautista and welcome to our Bible study here in Faith Baptist Church, South Metro. But before we proceed with our lesson tonight, let us first go to the Lord in prayer to ask for wisdom and guidance. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this time that you have given to us, that we may learn from your word. We ask that you would grant us wisdom and understanding, and may you lead us, Father, as we learn from your word. May you bless our time together, and all of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, we're still in our series on When God. And in our introduction tonight, I would like to ask for your participation, just a little, if it's okay. I would just um, <clears throat> like you to imagine with me, maybe um, delve in deep into our thoughts for a while as we begin our study. Just imagine that um, either you are, you, you're one of the children of Israel, or maybe you're just there in the scene. During that time when the Lord told Moses to gather his people, the children of Israel, because he has something to say to them in Mount Sinai. So, just imagine with me for a bit. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke as the Lord descended upon it with fire. The mountain trembled at his presence. Thunder and flashes of lightning filled its peak. Everyone was afraid as they watched from a distance. Who wouldn't? It was a sight to behold. No one dared to come near the mountain lest they be overwhelmed by the glory of God and die. It was a fearsome and magnificent display of God's power. But the purpose of the Lord's descent in all of its glory was not to intimidate his people nor to destroy their enemies. It was to tell the children of Israel, his chosen people, how to live and have an abundant life with him. Our text for tonight is found in the book of Exodus chapter 19 verses 16 to 25 and then we're going to jump to chapter 20 verses 18 to 22. So this is what happened. So it happened on the third day when it was morning. That there was thunder and flashes of lightning and a thick cloud was on the mountain and a very loud blast was sounded on a ram's horn so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. When Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they stood and presented themselves at the foot of the mountain, Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because, of the, because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked violently. And it happened, as the blast of the ram's horn grew louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him with a voice of thunder. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and he went up. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Go down, warn the people so that they do not break through the barriers around the mountain to, see, to the Lord to see. And many of them perish as a result of, because they cannot take the glory of God. Also, have the priests who approach the Lord consecrate or sanctify, set apart themselves for my sacred purpose, or else the Lord will break forth in judgment against them and destroy them. Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to, the, to Mount Sinai because you warned us, saying, Set barriers around the mountain and consecrate it. Then the Lord said to him, Go down and come up again, you and Aaron with you, but do not let the priests and the people break through the barriers to come up to the Lord or he will break forth in judgment against them and destroy them. So Moses went down to the people and told them again about God's warning. And in chapter 20, verses 18 to 22, it was a continuation. Now all the people witnessed the thunder and the flashes of lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the smoking mountain. And as they looked, the people were afraid, and they trembled and moved backward and stood at a safe distance. Then they said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen. 
but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come in order to test you, and in order that the fear of him that is a profound reverence for him will remain in you, so that you do not sin. So the people stood at a safe distance, but Moses approached the thick cloud where God was. Then the Lord said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, You have seen for yourselves that I have spoken to you from heaven. How important are the words of the Lord? So much that he came down clad in power to speak it himself. What is there for us to learn when God descends? Let's note a few things tonight. Number one, God descended to speak to his people. You know, it's very fascinating to, to see that with all of those display of power, the smoke, the lightning, the, 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 the earth quaking, despite all of those display of his power, his purpose for descending on top of the mountain was not to destroy, was not to do something grand, but to speak his word to his people, that his people may learn how to live. See, letter A, the Lord finds it worthwhile to meet with his people. You know, as fascinating as it is, and as strange as it sounds for the sovereign of the universe, the king of all kings, the lord of all lords, you know, for him to actually find it worthwhile to speak to mere mortals. In Exodus chapter 19, in our text, verse 17, I would just like to read that again, it says there, Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, to meet the Lord. And it's not, especially during their time, it's not an everyday thing that they could do. Not like how we do today. No, we can just go to the Lord in prayer and meet with Him. And as we study His Word, we fellowship with Him. But during their time, it was such a privilege. And if you have noticed, you know, that the people were afraid and they said, Don't let God speak to us or else we will die. But it was such a privilege. But you know, while they were just mere mortals, the Lord of heaven found it worthwhile. To speak with them, to meet with them. You know, sometimes we even choose the people that we meet, you know, and uh, or maybe other people you've experienced that uh, you're trying to get an audience with them, but they, they don't have the time to meet with you or they don't find it worthwhile to meet with us. But, you know, the Lord, despite all of our flaws, despite, despite our sinfulness, despite our flawed nature, no, for some reason, somehow, he finds it worthwhile to meet with us. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, it says there, For where two or three are gathered in my name, meeting together as my followers, I am among them. And now I know that it's kind of uh, ironic uh, to say that, uh, well, then how can we... Um, how, how can we be sure that God is in, in our midst when we meet, meet together? Well, um, the, the, the premise here is meeting together in my name, gathered together in my name as followers. So even though we're just meeting together virtually or via video conference or via live streaming of our um, video lessons, we're gathering, but despite being in separate places at one time, we are still gathering together our hearts and our minds as one in the name of the Lord to hear about Him. And therefore, we can say that even in a situation, in a setup like this, God is among us as He has said in His Word. So He came down from heaven and the Lord finds it worthwhile to meet with His people. And letter B, in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 17, that, that part that we skip, it's actually that time when God gave the Ten Commandments to, in, to instruct His people on how to live in accordance with His will. So again, after all of those mighty display of His power, the, the point of meeting with His people, of descending on Mount Sinai, was for Him to give His word 
that they may know how to live in accordance with His will. Letter C, God gave them laws and guide uh, to guide them as they walk with Him and live with each other. So those, the, that's the purpose of giving them the law. The guidelines that God gave them was so that they could live according to His will and so that they would learn how to live among each other. Remember, that this was the time when they came out of Egypt as slaves. And for the first time in their lives, they were free after 400 years of slavery in Egypt. Now they're they're out of Egypt and they're free men. They're, they're, they're living their lives, a new life as unto the Lord. And the Lord gave them laws or guidelines that they may know how to live. Now from now on, you are no longer slaves. You are my people and you are going to live as my people. And as my people, I want you to live an abundant life, a meaningful, a purposeful life, a life that has um, um that that influences others a life that tells others about the great lord who delivered you out of egypt and at the same time it also teaches them how to live with one another remember uh, as slaves they were of course they were together you know that they, they were like um brothers in arms it's like they're always in agreement with the, with each other because they have a common enemy like right that they're taskmasters but now they're free men so god had to intervene and make sure that they know how to live live with each other being the free men that they were uh, the, that they were now right at, at that time so lord had to teach them so that um, they would not abuse one another, another they would they would know how to conduct themselves uh, being mindful of others of the uh, other people's freedom and also being mindful of um how others would like to live their lives as well so he gave them laws to teach them and letter d god's ordinances were meant to preserve his people and make their lives flourish again the the laws that god has given are not meant to take away their fun, to take away their enjoyment in life. Rather, it's to protect them, to preserve their lives so that they could actually truly enjoy the life that He has given to them. And it's the same thing with us today. Sometimes we think, you know what, and there's just too many laws or too many commandments in the Bible. You know, it's like it's taking out all of my fun in life and you, you're, not able, you're not supposed to do this, you're not supposed to do that. If you do this, this these are the consequences, you know, but, but if I... If I had no idea what the Bible has uh, to say about anything in my life, then I can just live my life freely. But in reality, freedom, true freedom has boundaries. So that the freedoms that we have and the freedoms uh, that, that the freedom that others have would be protected. And, it's, and it would actually result in our enjoyment of the life that the Lord has given. So God's ordinances were meant to, to preserve His people and to make their lives flourish and letter e he spoke with his people to teach them how to live again as we have mentioned uh, as, as we have already discussed earlier god taught them how to live for be, from being slaves now from to being free men free men god's people and about to enter into the land that he has promised their father abraham isaac and jacob so, has God spoken to you recently on how to live your life? Well, we may say, well, not even our plants at home actually uh, were on fire. So, I'm not sure if the Lord has spoken to us like what you're suggesting, Matt. But actually, the Lord speaks to us today in a different way. As you may have already known that God speaks to us through His Word. It's either when we listen to the preaching of his word or to the teaching of his word or when we open his word the bible and read it ourselves that we may learn about what he has to say to us concerning our life and how to live it so has the lord spoken to you recent recently on how you can live your life in accordance with his will how to live with others and live your life to the fullest so that your purpose will be fulfilled and that you will find meaning in the life that you were given by the Lord. So God descended to speak to his people. And number two, Jesus Christ descended to give us life 
more abundantly. Now, this is kind of different because during that time when God descended on Mount Sinai, He taught His people how to live. Now, Jesus Christ came in the New Testament giving them life. Now, there's this life that only Jesus could offer at the time, that the life that, that the people in the Old Testament were still not able to live because Jesus Christ still had not come. So there were different, uh, they still lived by the grace of God, but there were different um, dynamics on how God's people lived their lives in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. So letter A, He came down from heaven that we may have everlasting life. In John 3 verse 13, it says there, No one has gone up to, into heaven. This was, this was Jesus talking with Nicodemus. But there is one who came down from heaven, the Son of Man himself, whose home is in heaven. So Jesus Christ came down from heaven. And we know what uh, verse 16 says in John chapter 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, one preacher said that, Everlasting life doesn't start when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and then when we die and then go to heaven, that's where everlasting life actually starts. But he said that the moment we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, even though we're still here on earth, our everlasting life had already started. Because death is not necessarily an end. And death is a transition from life here on earth to life in heaven with God himself. So Jesus, he came down that we may have life, that we may have everlasting life and the life empowered by the Holy Spirit. We will learn more about that later in the next point. Letter B, Jesus is the bread of life who came down to give life to the world. In John 6 verse 33, he says there, For the bread of God is he who comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Now, what is bread, right? What, what is bread? Bread is food, and food satisfies hunger. Bread satisfies hunger. And Jesus said that, I am the bread of life. He is the bread, the, the, the bread that satisfies the hunger of life. The bread that satisfies life. He satisfies our lives, our lives' needs. And the Bible also says, Jesus is also himself said that life is more than just food and water, more than clothing and all of the details of life. Life is more than those. Life is more about our walk with the Lord. And as we partake of this bread of life, Jesus Christ, we can start living that life that satisfies not just our physical um, bodies, but also our spiritual needs. Because we are more than just physical beings. Our life is actually spiritual. And as we get this satisfaction in our souls, it will emanate or it will manifest itself outwardly from us. And it will reflect the character of Christ and it will even affect others around us, making us a blessing to others. So Jesus is the bread of life who came down to give life to the world. And let us see, because he came, we can enjoy life even in a fallen world. In John chapter 10 verse 10, he says, The thief comes only in order to steal and to kill and to destroy. I, I came that they may have life, or I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. So an, an abundant life is a life that overflows. And abundance is more than just wealth and possessions. Abundance is filled with purpose, with meaning, and something that blesses people around us. So if we have an abundant life, it doesn't just affect us. It says there that it fills it to the full till it overflows. Like what the psalmist said in Psalm chapter 23, like my cup runs over the blessings of the Lord. No matter what kind of blessing it is, it touches the lives of others around him and others around you if our lives are lived to the fullest for the Lord, if we are living our lives abundantly as unto God. So Jesus, he descended to give us life more abundantly. And number three, the Holy Spirit descended that we may receive power. So it's very interesting when God descended in the Old Testament and on Mount Sinai, He taught His people how to live. And then in the New Testament, in the time of Jesus Christ, He descended so that He may give us life more abundantly. Because during the time of 
in the Old Testament, people didn't have the, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and because Jesus came down to the earth and then accomplished his purpose, the plan of salvation for us. Now, now during the time of the church age, our time today, we now have the privilege to be indwelt and to be filled by the Holy Spirit because Jesus came. And we'll uh, learn more about that. Well, letter A, Jesus himself, first we have to understand, accomplished his ministry on earth through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 to 17, it says there, After Jesus was baptized, he came up immediately out of the water, and behold, the heavens were opened, and he, John, saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lightning on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So Jesus, when he was here, operated as a human being. He, he, he lived his life performing his ministry. And even the, the miracles that he did were only through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's, it was, he did not use his deity. The, the scripture said that he stripped himself of his um, uh, powers at that time. He did not use it. So that um, he could demonstrate, he could be an example to those who will be following him. That great things could be accomplished and a, a life of faith in God could be accomplished even as a human being. So he operated by the power, or through the power of the Holy Spirit, even performing all of the miracles that he did. He did, he did not use his own power. He used the power of the, soul, of the Holy Spirit in him. And that same power is available for us today. How can we say that? Because even the disciples, the, the apostles that he appointed, were able to perform some miracles during their time. And now maybe we're asking, so uh, are we able to perform miracles today? We, we have the Holy Spirit in us, right? Well, we have to also understand that during their time, it was necessary for Jesus to perform miracles because first of all, it was written in scripture that the Messiah will be performing miracles. So uh, that that was to validate God's uh, Jesus' claim to be the Messiah, to be the Son of God. And another thing for the disciples, that was also part of God's commission to them so that um, people would know that Jesus Christ has sent them because they were performing some of the miracles that Jesus himself performed. So it was necessary dur during their time in their ministry. But today, we already have the Word of God, the Bible, um, completed so that um, we, will, we will be able to accomplish God's purpose for us. And again, their purpose before was to proclaim and to validate Jesus Christ in the time of the disciples, right? And their faith in Him. Now we have God's Word and our purpose is not necessary to validate it because Jesus Christ has already validated Himself and the disciples already showed it to the people. Now our job as believers in Jesus Christ is to proclaim the Word of God and share it with others. So the performing miracles is no longer needed and the power of the Holy Spirit has a different purpose in our lives. Today it's to strengthen us, it's to, it's to give us hope, it's to, to give us wisdom, help us understand His Word that we may share it with others. And now even, I'm not saying that God does not perform miracles today. He does it uh, in his own way, in, in in unique ways. Maybe in your life, you've experienced God's miracle, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the same way when it was performed in the Old Testament and even during the time of Jesus. God does it in different ways in our lives today because the purpose is no longer um, there for such magnificent displays to be um, needed. So, Jesus himself operated through the power of the Holy Spirit. He himself accomplished the ministry that he had on earth through the power of the Holy Spirit. And let her be, the Holy Spirit came when Jesus ascended to heaven, that believers in Christ may be guided in truth. So again, since Jesus Christ came, he was the bread of life, he gave us everlasting life, and then he ascended. So when he ascended, he allowed the Holy Spirit to perform his ministry because that was the plan god would send his son and then after when his, jesus christ would ascend to heaven the holy spirit will be staying for the believers today and it says there in john 16 verse 7 and 13 this was jesus speaking but i tell you the truth it is to your advantage that i go away that's why jesus is saying i'm i'm gonna go away i'm gonna die and be resurrected and i'm gonna go away but though don't worry because it's it's an advantage for you for if i do not go away the helper the comforter the advocate the intercessor the counselor strengthener and the standby or the holy spirit will not come to you so as long as jesus was, was there the holy spirit still did not start his ministry but if i go i will send him to you to be in close fellowship 
with you because the Holy Spirit was there, uh, was indwelling Jesus Christ at that time. So when Jesus ascended, the Holy Spirit now um, started this ministry of filling and indwelling believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And in verse 13, it says, there, But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak of His own initiative, but He will speak whatever He hears from the Father, the message regarding the Son. And He will disclose to you what is to come in the future. In other words, giving us wisdom and understanding of His Word as it is written. So, the Holy Spirit came when Jesus ascended to heaven so that believers in Christ may be guided in truth. And what is truth, right? And even Pilate asked this question when he was trying Jesus. Jesus told him, I am come to testify of the truth. And Pilate asked him, what is truth? Well, we can say that the truth is that Jesus came to die on the cross to save man from sin and reconcile us with God and give us life, life more abundantly and that now we can live with power through the holy spirit through the power of god's word and accomplish great things for the lord and live our lives to the fullest as god's people living the life as he had intended life to be despite all of the challenges in the world so let us see we can receive power from the holy spirit to accomplish god's will in our lives that's what we, uh, we were discussing earlier, right? God's purpose for us is different. It's to proclaim His Word. And we can be empowered by the Holy Spirit to do it. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says there, But you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses to tell people about me. So that's the word, to tell people about Jesus Christ, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, in Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth and that's a commission to all believers in jesus christ and we have the power to do it and now well i we, we may ask well how how do i do it I, I don't have the gift of teaching i can't even lead a small small group for in a bible study but you know what the greatest testimony that we can give others about christ in us is how we live our lives because sometimes no matter how we tell others about Christ about our faith about our knowledge of God's Word if our lives are contrary to what we say then people don't believe the message that we want that we are conveying to them but if they can see that we are living by faith living as if Jesus is among us living our lives the, the way that god has commanded us to jesus said that this by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another and jesus also said right right and even in our last lesson if you want to follow me you take up your cross and follow me so there are many other things that following jesus entails and we can do that through the power of the holy spirit and if people see that in our lives then even if we didn't have the the gift of teaching, our lives are more than enough to tell people about Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior that we believe and that we trust with our lives. And that there is life that's more abundant in Him. Letter D, we overcome the world by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, do not be overcome with evil but overcome evil with good but how do we overcome evil how how do we do good you know we're sinners we have the tendency to do evil but in the, the past the bible also says that there's no good in us right so how how do we do that how do we do good right how does the holy spirit produce it in us well it says here if we grow in the spirit galatians 5 22 to 23 says but the fruit of the spirit the result of His presence within us as we grow in His Word is love and selfish concern for others. And this is the life that others will see in us. We have love, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting. Wow! So patience is not just the, the ability to wait, but it's how we act while waiting. Wow, isn't that very timely in our situation today? How do we act while waiting for all of this commotion to stop? Kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness so even faithfulness is not from us yes even our faithfulness to the lord in his word is not from us it's through the power of the holy spirit only gentleness self-control against such against such things there is no law i love how andy stanley puts this you know there's no law against these things you don't go to jail for being too good <laughs> no one will arrest you for being too loving right so against such there is no law for being too pa patient no one can say anything against you by doing all of these things and these are the fruit of the spirit in our lives and how do we overcome evil with good by letting the holy spirit work in and through us and god jesus said when he ascended i will give you power you will receive power the power of the holy spirit so that your lives will be a blessing to others because your life your lives as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, are abundant. In conclusion, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit descended that the Word of God might be given and revealed to a dark and dying world. From the Old Testament to, to the New Testament in Jesus Christ, and even to our time today, the purpose is the same. For God to give his message to man that we may learn how to live in Christ and live lives more abundantly with meaning and purpose. A life that affects and encourages others to believe in the Lord. His message is that life is in Christ and that we can have it more abundantly. Again, I cannot stress or, or um, emphasize it enough because again, life is difficult. Life is challenging. It's not always happy. It's not always fun. But life can still be abundant if we learn to see it from the perspective that life is so much more than wealth, possessions, and all our physical needs. It's about God and how He works in us and how He accomplishes His purpose through us that others may also know and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Just, uh, just as how Jesus did it when he was here on earth. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us life. Thank you for descending to teach us how to live. Thank you for giving us Christ and the Holy Spirit that we may live lives empowered by your, by your Spirit. Father, I pray that you would help us to reflect the character of Christ, that others may see Christ in us, that they may also have the opportunity to believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, have this life that we also have, that in the future we'll be able to live our lives together with you. Father, I pray that you would grant us wisdom, that we may learn how to behave ourselves, Father, knowing that our lives are a testimony of your grace and of your love. Father, I pray for our brothers and sisters who may be having difficulties at this time that we are not even aware of. Lord, you know all of their needs. You know their hurts. You know their pains. You know what they're going through. And Father, we pray that you would deliver them. Father, may you make your presence um, felt in their lives at this time in such a way that they may understand and proclaim that truly life is abundant in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your grace and your faithfulness to us. And all of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for your time. And may you join us again next time as we learn from God's word.